Good afternoon, everybody. Thank you for being here. I'm Jay Basanko, Deputy Archivist of the United States. And welcome to something that's been in the works for an extended period of time, but the ribbon cutting ceremony for the new Digitization Center at the National Archives at College Park. Um, some of our guests have been somewhat delayed, but we're honored to have the support of three distinguished members of the Maryland Congressional Delegation, um, each of whom is a tireless champion of federal agencies and programs and also for federal employees. Their support for the National Archives was instrumental in securing the federal appropriations that made this center possible. So Senator Chris Van Hollen will um, join us shortly, but he's been serving the people of Maryland in the United States Senate since 2017. And among his multiple Senate committee assignments, he is the chairman of the Senate Appropriations Subcommittee on Financial Services and General Government, or as we like to say here, the subcommittee that funds NARA. We're lucky to call him our senator. So I mentioned that our congressional guests today were instrumental in making this digitization center possible. But without Congressman Steny Hoyer's service since 1981, there would not only be no digitization center, but there would be no National Archives in College Park. It was his leadership that made it possible for this magnificent building to open in 1994, a facility that is still, even after 30 days, thanks to you, the world's largest state-of-the-art archival facility and research center. And of course, this is all happening in the 4th Congressional District of Maryland, home to Congressman Glenn Ivey. Uh, we're proud to have him representing us and uh, look forward to seeing him uh, later today. I am now pleased to turn things over to the 11th Archivist of the United States, Dr. Colleen Shogan. Last year, Dr. Shogan became the first woman to be confirmed as the Archivist. Prior to that, Dr. Shogan served as Senior Vice President and director of the David M. Rubinstein Center at the White House Historical Association, and she previously worked in the United States Senate and as a senior executive at the Library of Congress. Please join me in welcoming Dr. Colleen Shogan to the podium. Thanks so much, Jay. I want to extend uh, my welcome to members of our congressional delegation, particularly Congressman Hoyer, who is responsible for this building, for these research facilities for the past 30 years. Every time I set foot in this building, I am so proud of the work that we do here and the resources that make that possible. So today we're here to open, though, the new digitization center for College Park. Uh, this is going to be, and I think all of you would agree, this is going to be a game changer for the National Archives. With these new high-speed scanners, we are going to be able to digitize more documents than ever before, probably to the tune of about to start about 15 million records a year. And then once we get started, anywhere upwards to 20 million to 30 million a year, which is just, you know, a, a, once again, it's a game changer for the National Archives. This will mean that we will be digitizing records 10 times faster than before. What does this mean actually in, in, in actuality and, and in real life? So we'll take an example of a very popular set of records, the US Marine Corps command chronologies, uh, which would have taken us about 10 years to digitize under normal circumstances. With this center, we are going to be well under a year to be able to digitize all of those records from the Vietnam era, which will provide access to those who served in Vietnam, to their families, and to a whole host of Americans that are interested in that era, and of course historians who will be writing future books and chronologies about that important era of American history. That's just one example of the impact this facility is going to have. Our mission at the National Archives, of course, is to preserve, protect, and share our nation's records. And this will actually serve as all three functions uh, here at the Digitization Center. And of course, using artificial intelligence in a responsible way and the machines behind me, 
we will be able to unlock just an enormous number of stories that are here at the National Archives in College Park, Maryland, of course in this facility, but in our 42 facilities all across the United States. So uh, before I hand this over to Congressman Hoyer, who's gonna say a few words, I do wanna thank everyone who is here today, everyone from the National Archives staff who has worked so hard to be able to open this center today. It takes a number of people to be able to do a project of uh, this scale. And of course, all of our staff who are working here today, uh, I was able to meet some of you beforehand and, and learn about what you're working on. Thank you so much for what you're doing, your service to the National Archives, uh, but also to the nation. And also my predecessor, David Ferriero, the 10th Archivist of the United States, who put into motion the plans for the Digitization Center. I'm so glad we were able to make his dream and his idea for this center a reality. So without further delay, I'm going to welcome Congressman Hoyer to the podium, and we can hear a few words uh, from him. Without him, once again, this building and this center would not be a reality. I don't know how many times she said I was going to speak briefly, but it was a number of times. <laughs> and I heard her say that. Uh, and I will speak briefly because you're all standing up, and I don't know how long Ivy and Ben Holland are going to talk. Uh, they will usually quickly say, well, Hoyer is usually the one that uh, speaks at, at length. But I'm very pleased to be here with all of you. And I was uh, responsible not so much for this center, uh, although it is attached to the archives that we we'd created. Uh, many years ago, some apparently it was some 30 years ago, uh, I was meeting with John Toll, who was the president of the University of Maryland at that time. I'm a graduate of the university and very close uh, to it and served on the Board of Regents for a while. Uh, and uh, a guy named John Berry, who was working for me, an extraordinarily talented uh, federal employee uh, working for me. Uh, leaned over, we were talking about a different subject, said, you know, this would be a good place for the archives. This place meaning where the archives was built, because it belonged to the University of Maryland, but it was not being used by the University of Maryland. And uh, so uh, I, of course, said, that's a great idea. And John Toll thought it was a great idea. And the reason he thought it was a great idea is because this is the best archival institution in the world. Hear me. It is the best, most able archival institution in the entire world. One of the largest, but also one of the best. And this digitalization uh, capacity will make it even better. Uh, one of the reasons we're making progress more quickly than was made 100 years ago or 50 years ago or probably 25 years ago uh, is because we are able to draw on extraordinary amounts of information and experience. And how do we do that? Because we digitized it and we hit, hit enter and it comes back. And that's an oversimplification, I understand that, but you all get what I mean. Uh, I was a file clerk for CIA while I was a student here at the University of Maryland. I worked 3.30 to 12 at night. Uh, and what we did was we got little three by five cards from the analyst, and it had a name on it, Steny Hoyer. And there may have been, if I, I was really a bad guy and there was CIA that got a lot of information on me, there may have been a hundred cards. And they would come down to uh, the file room, and there were a lot of us working in that file room, all of w which were in college. We were all in college and working, we had to work our way through college, 3.30 to 12 at night. And we would take those cards and we would pull the files. And I kid people, I said, I did a job that analysts now just do by hitting enter. And we get it back. But we get it back because of this capacity. And it makes an extraordinary difference. My colleague, Senator Van Hollen, is here, who is the chair of the subcommittee that oversees your budget. And by the way, let me ask you, how many, I, I heard, some of you are, have just been rel recently hired uh, to work in this uh, center. Raise your hand if you're a new hire. So we have a good group of new people. My presumption is that most of the rest of you 
have worked here at archives in some capacity or another, uh, or at some other maybe federal facility, and have been, and because of your skills, you've been lured away from wherever you were working to come here uh, to make this one of the best centers in the world at doing what you do uh, with an extraordinary c capacity. Uh, I've been in Congress longer than probably 80% of you have been born. <laughs> I was elected to Congress in 1981, and there was a publishing house t not too far from here on East West Highway. And I went in, and the computer was approximately the size of this room behind me that they were using. This has more capacity than that room had. And you are making sure this can get even more information more easily. More easily in that I can write in something that may be not really on point, but this is smart enough to tell me what I want to know. And that's what you do. You will expand the ability of literally millions of researchers around the world because of what you will enable uh, to happen. The storing of the information, that's, that's a clumsy term for what you do. It's a much more complicated and uh, scientific term for what you do. But then pushing enter and getting that information back, or put it, pushing search more accurately. Uh, so I'm pleased to be here. But for those of you who are new and those of you who are not, uh, I've been able over the years to get a lot of money for buildings. It was a quarter of a billion dollars for this, not, not this part of it, but the original uh, building. That quarter of a billion dollars would be a waste of money if it were, near, were not for the people who work in that $250 billion, million dollar building, not billion. Um, you make the difference. The American public does not understand the quality and commitment of the folks it has working for them. And unfortunately, too often, bureaucrat or federal employees use not as a descriptor, but as an epithet. And so I want to thank each and every one of you in this room. Because without you, it would be a waste of money to have spent on this facility. Uh, th this technology, um, it would have simply uh, been a building with not much purpose and not much product. So I thank each and every one of you. And Doctor, I thank you for the many ways in which you have contributed to the quality of uh, uh, government because you've been in a number of uh, uh, facilities. Uh, Again, because all of you are standing, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to really stop with that, but I want to mention the two, my two colleagues who are here. I represented where you stand uh, for 40 years. And we drew a, a map that the Washington Post didn't think was so pretty. I thought it was wonderful. You understand, it did exactly what we wanted to do. It elected a lot of Democrats. I'm a Democrat. This is not a partisan speech, but that's what it did. Uh, and I represented this area for 40 years. Uh, but the state legislature, in its great wisdom, wanted a pretty map. And so I agreed to say, okay, make a pretty map. And uh, I was blessed by that sort of giving up of territory to get a wonderful new colleague. His name is Glenn Ivey. He just walked into the room. He's going to be speaking to you in a little bit. He now represents you. And you can be thankful that you have somebody who has uh, uh, focus, uh, intellect, uh, and vision uh, to understand, A, what you're doing, understand how important what you're doing is, and to make sure that you have the resources. Now, I happen to be, hopefully, next year, hopefully, again, this is not a political speech, just me hoping, uh, I'll be to be chair of your subcommittee uh, next year. 
Uh, and the director and I were just talking about how much resources we need to make sure you can do what you uh, are, are charged to do and need to do. Uh, Glenn Ivey, uh, I, I know, uh, because I've known Glenn for a very long time. He, his wife, by the way, is chairman of the county council in, in Prince George's County. So the, I, his, his son is a member of the House of Delegates. So be nice to the Ivies. They have a lot of power. <laughs> I try to be nice to the Ivies. Uh, and then there's uh, Senator Van Hollen. Y you guys are pretty well situated in terms of the, because although I'm the ranking member of your subcommittee, Chris Van Hollen, Senator Van Hollen, is the chair of your subcommittee. And uh, if it had not been for Senator Van Hollen in this most recent uh, appropriation process, we would not have gotten to the level of funding for very necessary federal agencies, some of which are small, some of which are big like the IRS, and some sort of medium like you. Uh, had we not had the chairmanship of the Senate committee, which the Democrats controlled, the Republicans had a budget that they wanted to give you uh, fiscal year 22 levels of funding. And, and we got fiscal year 23 for some and a little more uh, for others. But Senator Van Hollen has been a giant in the, in the support uh, of this agency uh, in particular, this uh, enterprise, uh, but also generally throughout the federal government, but more than that is an extraordinary member of the United States Senate of, of, great, uh, of great caring uh, for people and, and great focus on accomplishing things for the American people uh, and for our state of Maryland. So Chris, thank you very much, and Glenn, thank you very much, and Madam Director, thank you. But as I said at the beginning, thank all of you. Because the fact that you get up, come to this enterprise, or log in to this enterprise, uh, it makes an extraordinary difference. And hundreds of millions, billions of people, uh, one could extrapolate, uh, are benefited by the fact that you make critical information available to literally uh, millions and millions of people that turn that information into better lives for those billions of which I spoke. God bless you. Thank you very much. Now, I don't want you to think I just sort of, you know, came and ran. I'm going to do that. But I need to explain to you. We are late starting because we had a bill that we had to pass, the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Act, a critical bill to the security of the United States of America. Uh, and uh, frankly, uh, the majority party put it on a number of times and did not get the votes to, uh, to pass it. Uh, it passed, thank heaven, 212 to 212. Now, that was not the final, it was 260 to some odd for the final bill. But the amendment that would have undermined its effectiveness failed 212 to 212. On a, on a tie vote, the proposition fails. But that's how important it was to stay on the job. And that's where Congressman Ivey and I were. And now, because of the lateness here, I'm late to the next. <laughs> so I'm going to run. But uh, I, I would prefer to have the ability to stay and to shake each one of your hands and thank you for what you do every day. God bless you. Congressman Hoyer, and if everybody could just sort of part just a little bit to make his his exit uh, as efficient as possible, that'd be wonderful. We can. So we're gonna. Um, not only is Glenn Ivey a great congressman, but he's worried that I wouldn't be in the picture. There we go. Okay. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. Grace has the other two.
All right, so if everybody could just sort of reset themselves. Um, Senator Van Hollen, thank you for being here today, and the podium is all yours, sir. All right, well, thank you very much. Well, we cut the ribbon, uh, so congratulations uh, on opening this space uh, officially. I know many of you are already hard at work. Um, Archivist Shogun, it's great to be with you and the entire team uh, here at the National Archives from Washington and, of course, here in, in Maryland. And uh, let me just uh, first say a few words about Congressman Hoyer. I know he had to, to leave. Uh, well, first of all, I didn't know he used to be looking through the CIA files. Um, I was going to tell him I've seen the CIA file on Congressman Hoyer, so it's, you know. But uh, it, it, he has been a, a remarkable advocate, of course, uh, for the archives for a very long period of time. I came in a little bit late, but I did hear him mention the name John Barry, who was a staff member uh, for Congressman Hoyer a, a long time ago. And if I'm right about the history here, uh, it was around 1988 uh, that Congressman Hoyer, together with then Senators Sarbanes and Mikulski, uh, secured the original funding uh, for the entire uh, building uh, here. So he's not here, but if we could just give him another round of applause, uh, I'd appreciate that. And as he mentioned, we're very blessed now to have uh, Glenn Ivey representing the area uh, that we're in. And I've worked very closely with uh, Congressman Ivey. We worked together to bring the FBI uh, headquarters uh, to Prince George's County. Uh, we've worked together on NASA Goddard, uh, which is part of this congressional district and a great part of uh, the state of Maryland. Um, we worked together on many things. So including, of course, um, what we're here to talk about today. So to Glenn, thank you very much uh, to your team. And as you heard from Congressman Hoyer, yes, the IV family has the whole political market cornered from um, the council, local, state, to federal. Uh, so you want to get something done in government in Maryland, um, the Ivies are, are they're great public servants. So let me um, just say I am, I am proud to have been part of this most recent um, effort. I do chair the Senate Appropriations Subcommittee uh, that funds and supports the archives, and we have succeeded over the last three years in securing about $90 million uh, to help uh, with this new chapter, the digi digitization uh, effort, um, both in terms of the, the, the space here as well as the overall initiative and I'm pleased we also secured in for fiscal year 24 another 30 million dollars uh, for this ongoing um, effort so those are the the dollars but what is important of course is is your mission what those dollars uh, are used to accomplish and I have to say that um, when I think of the archives and all of you who work at the archives I, I really do believe you have really exciting and interesting uh, roles to play in our in our country in our society and really globally I mean you are literally the the, the repository um, of our history the good the bad and the ugly it's an amazing treasure um, it's amazing gift uh, to the American people uh, and in fact uh, to the entire world and it is important that we be able to share that with as many people uh, as possible uh, as you know, for, for decades and decades, in order to be able to access uh, the records of the archives, um, you had to come and you know, participate in a sitting room or come physically uh, to an area in this, in this region um, in order to be able to sort of ask for a document and have a chance to take a, a look at it. Um, what you're doing here by putting these records online is bringing American history and all the other information you have uh, in real time to people across the country and in fact people uh, across the world can access it. That is a huge, huge gift. Um, I mean these are records that belong to the American people and it's important that we share them uh, with the American people. Uh, so if I'm right, I think by fiscal year 26 uh, we're aiming to get about 500 million uh, documents, records uh, online. 
think about the, the number of people that will be able to now participate in reviewing the records um, that you have here in our, his, our history. And I know that overall, I think you've got, what, 13 billion records? So obviously, we've got a little ways to go uh, to get even more uh, records online. But that will just add, even add to our, our ability to collectively understand our history. And of course, it's important to understand our history for its own sake so that we know what our national story is. Uh, but it's also important to know our history to be able to help chart our future and sort of shine a light on the good of the past, the bad of the past, and, and how we can make ourselves an even stronger country and a more perfect union. So thank you all for being part of this, this treasure that is the National Archives. And thank all of you for doing this work uh, to make sure that the American people now um, can share in their own story. Uh, and access their own story uh, more quickly and more easily and more efficiently. It is, as I said, a, a great gift, and it's a gift that all of you through your work here uh, are really giving to uh, this country uh, and to uh, the world. So it's wonderful to be here. Glad we cut the ribbon. Um, but I do look forward to going online myself and uh, being able to research uh, records that are going to be the result of, of your good work, both in terms of putting them online and being the custodians uh, of our history. So now let me turn it, can I introduce Glenn Ivey? Oh, sure. So as I said, uh, Glenn Ivey has hit the ground running as a member of Congress. He's uh, no stranger to the Hill. He'd worked uh, in, on policy issues for a very long time, but now it's great to have him as a partner in actual lawmaking. And as you heard, one of the reasons we're delayed is they just finished in the House uh, the passage of the legislation um, on FISA 702 program, which is actually, you know, there, it, it is a, it, it's one of those areas where, you know, you have to have a debate. Um, and I was just telling Congressman Ivey, I'm glad that they only kept a two-year, they kept this at a two-year sunset. I think it's important that when you're dealing with um, surveillance programs, which, yes, can be happy, important to our national security, but it is also very important that the Congress keep oversight over that on behalf of the American people, and in my view, not just turn that over sort of indefinitely um, to um, one branch of government or one part of one branch of government. So it's part of the checks and balances in our system, and I'm really glad to have Glenn Ivey um, in the House of Representatives and as a Maryland partner. So, Glenn, please give him a warm up. Thank you, Senator. I appreciate it. Uh, it has been a crazy day, the FISA vote. This may be the first time I've been in Congress where I actually voted the same way as Marjorie Taylor Greene <laughs> on anything maybe other than when to break for lunch. So. Uh, you know, I'm, I want to be conscious of the fact, A, you all are standing, and, you know, I, I got here late, so I don't know when Steny started, but I, I don't want to go too long. Besides that, you know, uh, I'm, I'm following two great speakers. There's an old saying in politics, everything's been said, but everybody hasn't said it yet. Uh, so I want to be conscious of that. And this is a little bit like being the game after the Super Bowl, since we've already cut the ribbon. Um, but I did want to take a moment and just thank you for the great work that you do. Uh, my mother was a librarian. Um, my mother-in-law was a librarian. Uh, and they had a strong commitment to what that meant. And it's important, I think, too, for the reasons Chris mentioned a moment ago. But the history of the United States, um, I think we're the greatest country in the world and, and maybe ever. And uh, this, it's important for us to track this and make sure it's available to everybody around. I, I, I'm not an archivist. I'm, I'm not really good at researching records. But a few years ago, I took a stab at trying to trace my family history. And uh, my, my kids still don't want me to do the DNA testing, so I haven't done that yet, which makes me worry that maybe one of them has gotten into something that maybe he or she shouldn't have. I don't know. but. Um, but, you know, I started dabbling with it, and I did online research and the like, and, and I, I got a chance to, to go. My family's originally from North Carolina, and I got fairly far along, but um, around 1870, going to 1860, they made a jump from human records 
to property records to trace my uh, relatives on my mother and father's side. And so I had to stop there because that was such a heavy, uh, I wasn't mentally ready to make that transition yet. Uh, but the fact is that when I do get myself together and we're ready to do that, the record is there. Uh, and I think working the other direction, the transition we've made from where the United States then was then to where it is now, I think is beyond significant. It's, it's really incredible in a lot of ways. And I think it's critical that people like you and an institution like this is making sure that we track that history because this is a history that's going to make a difference. I think already does, inspires people around the world, but I think will for generations to come. So thank you for the work that you do. Uh, keep it going. Keep it up. I think it makes a huge difference, not just for us now, but, but for those coming in the future. Keep up the great work, and thanks for letting me be part of it. Have a great day. Thank you, Congressman Ivey. Um, we're proud to be part of the, the fourth uh, Congressional District of Maryland. Um, what the two of you missed me sort of say at the beginning is, is the deep appreciation that we have um, as an agency and um, as federal employees for your advocacy for federal departments and agencies and their programs, but also for federal employees. So thank you. Thank you all for being here today to celebrate this milestone with us. Uh, we're now going to offer tours of the Digitization Center. We have staff uh, positioned at locations throughout the space. We're ready to demonstrate the new equipment and the processes. Um, and then we will also offer tours in the conservation lab and the research rooms. And there's a really special document display across the hall. If you are interested in any of these, there's Sarah. Sarah, keep waving your hand. Uh, work your way to the back and Sarah will um, get you with one of our tour guides and there will also be refreshments available in the atrium area outside but no food and drink in here please um, but again thank you to all the NARA staff that made this happen thank you to all of our you know 65 uh, will soon be 80 new employees um, all, all coming to work in the in the at, at the National Archives at College Park and Again, thanks for all being here today.